Hi everybody. I wanted to make a video on the new Bluetooth module that I found. I've been looking for one that is similar to the HC05 pass-through Bluetooth module, um, but I needed something that was a little bit cheaper and one that was a little bit smaller as well. So after a bunch of research, I came across the HMBT4502. I had a little bit of trouble getting this one up and running, uh, just because I wasn't used to anything other than the HC05, which is very simple to plug and play, get it up and running. But I ended up contacting Hope RF because I wasn't able to find any information online that was useful. The BT45 Bluetooth module is, again, a pass-through module, so it will send uh, data that it has received from an app, and it will transfer it directly to a microcontroller, and it will send um, data from the microcontroller directly back to the app if required. It's a nice little module. It seems to work really, really well once you get it up and running. It's pretty reliable once you figure it out. This board is only about $4.50 Canadian compared to a $20 HC05 board, so that's far more reasonable if I'm going to be buying a lot of them. The solder pads on the 4502 are a little small because it's a surface mount board. Uh, if you don't already have the footprint on your circuit boards, uh, it's a little bit hard to solder to. Uh, so I designed a breakout board just for myself or if anyone needs one. Um, they're available on my website, but I made them so that they you just solder on the chip, the BT4502, and then you have all of your larger pinned outputs for your typical breadboard. I also added some indicator LEDs. This is more just for troubleshooting. There's an indicator LED to let you know when all of the pins are active. So if you look at the BT4502 module and you see the pinouts, you have a few more than you normally would on the HC05 module. We have ground. Uh, there's many of them. They're all tied together internally, so we don't really have to worry about that. We'll just find one and, and connect it. You have your transmission pin from the module that is outputting to a microcontroller, perhaps. Then you have your receiving pin. This is coming from the microcontroller to the Bluetooth module so that the microcontroller can contact and talk to the Bluetooth module, or send data to your application. You have your positive voltage pin. This is 1.8 to 3.6 volts DC. You have your wake up pin. This is to trigger the Bluetooth low energy module to either go into hibernation or wake up to uh, receive data from the microcontroller, and then it goes back to sleep again. So this is actually controlled by the microcontroller. You have your power down pin. This actually shuts down the Bluetooth module so that it doesn't uh, use any energy at all. It actually shuts down, fully disconnects from your application or anything that's paired to it. So we want to keep this one live if you're going to be using it as a typical pass-through module. But we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And now you have your interrupt pin here. So this actually goes live. It goes to a 1 when your BT4502 is trying to send data to the microcontroller. So if the app that you're using to communicate to a microcontroller sends, let's say, hello world, this interrupt pin is going to go live about 500 milliseconds before it actually sends the data. It's kind of a, a warning flag for the microcontroller to pay attention, and then it'll start sending all the data to the microcontroller, and then it goes back down to a zero again. So this circuit board actually has a built-in, uh, it's a wire trace antenna that works really quite well. Uh, I did a, a range test on it to see how far I could get before I lost connection. And I was able to actually have my circuit board in my office and I left the building and walked out about 200, 250 feet out onto the street before I actually lost connection. It was <laughs> really quite impressive, so I'm happy about that. Hope RF actually added a, a lot uh, to their data sheet. You, you can follow the data sheet pretty much exactly as it's written out here and you'll be able to get this thing up and running as long as everything goes well on your cell phone side or you have your programming set up properly. 
but I'm going to show you how to set it up with my program or with a program. It'll just make things a little bit easier than having to go through this, but once you see it in program form, this will probably make a lot more sense to you and you'll be able to troubleshoot it a little bit better if you need to further on. You can communicate directly to the Bluetooth module without it transferring to an app. So let's say you wanted to change the name of the Bluetooth module when it comes up on your pairing on your cell phone. You can change the name of it, you can change you know, the bits per second, your baud rate, you can change out a lot of things. They have a lot of different options that you can change on here. And everything's um, set up on what are called AT commands. Here they call them the AT instruction list, and if you look down here, there's a list of all of the different commands, what they do, if they are saved uh, after power down has occurred, yes or no. If you go through here, you can change all sorts of stuff. And this is how you set up your serial string to send it directly to the module. If you start anything with TTM colon, that's going to tell the module to not use the pass-through data setup it's going to use or it's going to take this and try to figure out what you're asking of it and then it'll provide a response either it understood and it'll tell you what it is if you've asked a question like uh, what is your bits per second or the baud rate is uh, you would send this serial text to the module via uart on the microcontroller and then it's going to respond and say you know 1150 200 is the baud rate so if you start any data transmission with TTM colon, the module is going to think that you want to ask something of it or you want to change something. So it's not going to send it with the pass-through settings. It's not going to send it to an app. It's going to take it and try to figure out what you're asking of it. So it's going to be TTM and then whatever is the requested instruction for it. The first time that you pair to the Bluetooth module with your cell phone, you're going to probably have to put in a password. So this is your this is your password that's uh, by default. So just put that in uh, one time, and you shouldn't have to put it in again. So when you first try to pair to this device, let's say you're using Bluetooth terminal, you're going to need to set up a Bluetooth low energy profile. This is going to be a custom profile, and we'll walk through that in a moment, but just so you know, these need to actually be set up in the app before you can transfer data back and forth. Your initial service identification number is going to be uh, FFE0. You'll be able to find this in the custom profile section of the application. To write data, the ID number needs to be FFE9, and to receive data, the ID number needs to be FFE4. So let's take a quick look at the pins again, just before we go on to the program. So in order to get this chip up and running initially, let's say we want to use it as strictly a pass-through system so that we can send data from the app on our phone to a microcontroller. So our VDD needs to be connected to, at most, 3.5 volts, or 3.6, and at the lowest, 1.8 volts. So let's connect that to a positive voltage in those ranges. Take a ground and ground it. Now we're going to take our RX pin of the Bluetooth module and connect it to the TX pin of the microcontroller. And we're going to connect our TX pin of the Bluetooth module to the RX pin of the microcontroller. For the power down pin, remember that if this pin is not active, uh, it puts the module to sleep indefinitely. So the power down pin actually controls whether or not the Bluetooth module has any power at all. So it actually shuts down the entire chip and resets it if you don't have this pin active and it is active low. So we're gonna just pull this down to zero and keep it there so that it doesn't lose connection or break pairing with whatever device that we're connecting it to. So again, take this pin and put it to zero volts and leave it there. So the wake up pin is only used if we want to send data from the microcontroller to our cell phone app. 
Otherwise, it's not really needed. We can just keep it at um, zero volts. The interrupt pin, again, is only used by the module for when the Bluetooth module wants to send data to the microcontroller that it received from a cell phone app. So we don't need to be concerned about controlling it with the microcontroller. Once we have all of our pins connected and we have them set accordingly, the Bluetooth module should be advertising now. So we should be able to see it on our cell phone when we try to pair it. So we're going to turn on our Bluetooth. Mine says Brave Lighting for my Brave Tech company. Uh, that's just because I changed the name. Yours will come up as CMT4502. It's just the sub-module that's used in the overall module of the BT4502. So if you click on it, you may be asked to provide the password. That's five or six zeros. Refer back to the data sheet. So if you click on it, it's going to say that we need to use an app for this device. That's fine. Here we're going to use Serial Bluetooth Terminal, so download that app. We're going to open it, and then we're going to go to our devices. We're going to choose Bluetooth Low Energy, because this is a BLE module. So your CMT4502 should show up here. So we're going to do a long press on it, because we need to configure it as per the data sheet. We'll hit Edit. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go from predefined to custom. Mine is already set up, but I'll show you how. So we're going to press the top service universal unique identification number. Now, if you recall back on page 27 of our data sheet, we need to set the pass through data channel characteristics. So our service universal unique identification number needs to be FFE0. So we're going to choose this middle one that I'm showing here that says a bunch of zeros and then FFE0. That's the one that we want. So we're going to click that. Then we're going to go down to our read characteristic. And if you look back on the data sheet, the read characteristic on page 27, or also known as notify, is FFE4. So we're going to click FFE4. And our write characteristic is FFE9. So we click, make sure that we're on FFE9. Now our profile for this module is set up and we can send and receive data. Now we can go back, we can click on it. It's connecting to my Bluetooth module. Again, the name is just different because I changed it myself. Now it says we're connected. So the module actually tells the microcontroller once the system has paired to a cell phone. So this is what it kind of looks like. As we move along, you can see that the interrupt pin went down, telling us that we need to prepare for data to be transferred. Here we had about 90 milliseconds of warning before we had received the connection confirmation. Uh, the module always communicates with TTM. So it's connection confirmation is TTM colon connect. And it always ends with these three bytes. We have 0D, 0A, 00. Using the app, I can send hello. So you can see that our interrupt pin goes low before the module sends the pass-through data to the microcontroller. So we get hello, and then we get a couple of end bytes here. It always sends end bytes after it's finished its data transmission. So in order to send data from the microcontroller to an application on your phone, you're going to need to set up your program in this way. So the order of operations for this is you need to have your power down pin active at all times. Then you need to wake up your module by setting the wake pin to zero. Give it some time to properly wake up before it's ready to receive data. So we put a delay of about five milliseconds in there. Then we're going to just send our data. We can send it as just a proper string. We don't need any uh, end bits or end bytes at all. We just send it as right now this one is sending just test at 1150-200 baud rate. Then we're going to wait about five milliseconds for the data to send, and then we can put the module back to sleep again. 
with the wake up pin set to one. So I just wrote a small program here that says, you know, the power down pin is always awake. And then the wake up pin goes active, a small delay, then it sends our data, then a small delay, and then it puts the module back to sleep, waits one, one second, and then sends it again. So here on my terminal app, you can see that I keep receiving test every one second. So you can see here the data that we were trying to send is right here. This is the four bytes. This is T-E-S-T. -E if I zoom in, you'll see T-E-S-T. -T. There are no end bytes required when I send data from the microcontroller to the app using pass-through data. Before I send the data, everything is in kind of a hibernation state. Nothing is being sent or received. The only thing that's active right now is our power down pin just to keep the module alive. So five milliseconds before I want to send the data, I wake up the module, wait five milliseconds for it to properly wake up. I send the data, I wait another five milliseconds before I put the module back into hibernation again. If you want to communicate with the module directly, maybe you want to request uh, a value from it, or you want to adjust one of the variables or change the name of the device or anything like that, you're going to want to set up a communication system that looks just like this. It's going to look very similar to how you communicate from the microcontroller to the cell phone app using the pass-through system, except for this way, we need to let the module know that we want to talk to the module specifically. So it looks like this. We, we take the wake up pin, drop it down to zero to make it active. We give it the five sec millisecond delay. Then now we're going to write our string, but we're going to start with TTM colon. That tells the module to start paying attention. Then we're going to look at our AT commands list on our data sheet to see which AT command is required in order to, for example, change the name of the device. For this one, we are changing the name of the device. So it's REN dash, and then I add the name of my device that I want to give it. So that's brave dash lighting. And then when we're speaking to the module directly, we need to end with three end bytes. And those end bytes in hexadecimal are 0D, 0A, 0. Once you're finished your serial communication that you actually want to request from it always end with these three bytes. Otherwise, it's not going to understand what you want and you're not going to get the information that you're looking for. Once we've sent our three end bytes, we give it the delay of five milliseconds and then we put the module back into hibernation or sleep on the wake up pin. And if the code is correct, then we're going to receive a response from the module and it will also end with the three end bytes. Here we can see that as we are beginning our data transmission to communicate to the module directly to change the name, everything is kind of in hibernation mode at first, and then we cue the module to wake up for five milliseconds before we start our data transfer. That's our little drop down here. And then we have our TTM colon REN for rename plus the dash that is required by the AT command. And then we have the name that I want to give it. That's brave dash lighting. And then at the end, we have our three hexadecimal end bytes, D A zero. Once we shut everything off, we go and we look back at the response from the Bluetooth module. TTM dash OK. That tells us that we have successfully changed the name of the module. And then we get our three end bytes that are exactly the same as ours. These are the boards that I designed for this module. You don't need these boards if you're comfortable uh, doing the soldering on the small pins. These are only about a millimeter wide, each one of them. So I just built this one for myself, and if anyone else needs them, uh, they can order them from my website. 
But I basically just took all the pins and then I output them to, you know, a proper breadboard size pins. Another feature that I added to these boards was just kind of a, a convenience feature because most of my circuit boards do not need to speak back to a cell phone app. I have my own app that controls the products that I build and it just needs to change colors and, and uh, make things move. So I don't need this system to, I don't need my microcontrollers to talk back to my application. So what I did was I built in these resistors here, these two resistors. Uh, this top one pulls the power down pin down to ground, which keeps the board alive and able to be paired. And this pin uh, is connected to the wake pin, which pulls it high up to 3.3 volts or 3.5 or whatever in order to make sure that it is in hibernation mode and it is ready to receive pass-through data from an app. So you don't really need to connect anything uh, to the microcontroller other than the TX line here then so that the module can transmit the data that it has received from the app to the microcontroller. You don't need to connect the wake pin or the power down pin anymore. Well, I think that's pretty much everything that you need to know on the BT4502. I've been ordering mine through DigiKey. Again, you can order just the module, the, the BT4502, for about $4.50 Canadian if you need to. But if you don't feel comfortable soldering the small pins yourself, you can definitely go to my website and you can order the breakout board alone. Or you can order the breakout board with the module soldered in place already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.